This is the intro. I'm thinking, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> taking, a, uh, taking a slightly different approach to uh, this video. Um, I'm wearing a suit. <laughs> this is more in keeping with my Batman review slash first impressions and I made like a year ago. Just uh, last night, I watched John Wick chapter four uh, and I wanted to share my thoughts on it. Straight off the bat, I wanna just kind of briefly talk about John Wick as a whole and as a franchise. It's been one that initially I was a bit resistant to. I heard a lot of kind of the buzz and the, all the general sort of praise going in its direction. Uh, however, upon that kind of that first experience with the first movie, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed it. Number two, I remember really, really enjoying. It's the one I've seen the least. It's the one I know I can remember the least about, but I remember really enjoying it. Um, and then of course I got to three, which was, you know, it's, it's not my favorite, but certainly rewatching number one, uh, the first John Wick film, that one, that one holds up really, really well on repeat viewings. I think John Wick benefits from being incredibly stylish and incredibly committed to its story, its world and its characters. It's very straight faced in how it does it. And in turn, it's able to kind of find humor due to how straight faced it is. So yeah, after rewatching that first film and kind of re-familiarizing myself with the world, I was super excited to watch John Wick Chapter 4. And I'm pleased to say that it's really, really great. Um, I perhaps, I feel like I'm in the group of people that don't love it as much as a lot of other people do. I mean, I was very surprised to see, as the time of this recording, the, uh, the kind of the aggravated score for Letterboxd. Generally speaking, critical reception has been tremendous. And for me, that's I think that's fantastic to see because one of the big takeaways I get from Chapter 4 is how much of a showcase it is for stunt work. I feel like across the entire spectrum of filmmaking, one I don't really delve into too much and one I don't really discuss much in my videos is stunt performance. The amount of effort that goes into being a stunt performer is tremendous. And personally, I feel like there is not enough appreciation out there uh, with exception being, well, one of the first ex um, exceptions I can think of is that all of Corridor Digital's Stuntmen React videos do a phenomenal job at giving exposure, giving insight, and generally showing respect for stunt performers, because I personally feel like they don't get enough respect. And John Wick Chapter 4 is just, it is, ah, oh, I mean, it's tremendous the amount of effort that these guys have put into it. The stuff that's been achieved on a technical level, as well as also the choreography of the fight scenes, is incredible uh, and the amount of kind of physical damage that essentially they put themselves through as they throw there's so many car hits i mean i don't think i've come from the last time i've seen a film where as many people get hit by a car than in chapter four the, the, the commitment that the stunt performers give to this film really kind of helps ground you in the story it helps immerse you in the action you become more convinced and enthralled in john wick's violent rampage <laughs> speaking of keanu reeves big fan of him he is great as always in this film i think john wick is easily becoming or has become his kind of his most iconic character i mean he's the perfect role to play that kind of straight-faced super serious but with like a little bit of kind of dark humor underneath he, he plays john wick really well and it's, it's kind of hard to see anyone else ever playing john wick one of my favorite things about the first film was the mystery that is created over who john wick is and the way each film is subsequently developed on that while also still making it feel like this is an older John Wick who is, you know, we barely scratched the surface of what this man has done and is potentially capable of, but he still does some just incredible, incredible stuff throughout the entire tri the entire quadrilogy. In particular, in Chapter 4, John Wick, absolutely. I mean, the body count is absurd. Um, <laughs> it is absolutely absurd. Keanu Reeves is fantastic in linking into the stunt work. It looks like Keanu did a lot of his own stunts for this film, uh, which makes it even more impressive. In particular, he shows off some wicked nunchuck skills. Speaking of nunchucks, when John Wick whips those nunchucks out, it was fucking awesome. You know, I, I love a bit of nunchuck action. I absolutely love Bruce Lee to bits and that whole scene into the dragon where he's laying waste to fools with his nunchucks. Kind of gave that similar kind of vibe to it, which I really enjoyed. And there are lots of really memorable fight scenes throughout this, as you would expect. In particular, there is this incredible sequence where the camera tracks John Wick from above, like a top-down shooter almost. Shout out to Corridor Digital again, because I feel like there's definitely some inspiration from Corridor's top-down shooter video. There has to be, in terms of like the, technica the technicality and the similarities. It's, it's, it's terrific. It's really exciting stuff. Uh, and that sequence was easily one of my favourites. Along with most of the entire uh, opening action scene, there's, there's like a little one at the beginning 
which is just like a really small introduction. But then there's a there's a big one, the first proper one in the, uh, I think it's the Osaka Hotel. Um, I think that's what it's called. Pretty much most of that whole bit inside the hotel with John Wick just absolutely cracking cracking skulls everywhere. Like that was that was incredible. The choreography and the technical achievements of these action sequences are second to none. It's probably some of the best I've ever seen in an action film. I mean, as always, the visuals are sensational. I think John Wick is super underrated when it comes to talking about the lighting in the film. They do such a good job at creating this kind of like comic book aesthetic where there is these kind of starkly bright, contrasting, uh, oftentimes neon lighting that is is kind of used to create this incredibly, it heightens the stylish slick tone. It helps to kind of create this interesting visual juxtaposition. I also love neon in general. I'm a big fan of neon lighting. I just always find it visually compelling and just lovely to look at. And John Wick Chapter 4 is no exception. In fact, you can probably see throughout the entire four films, there has this, been this progression and this improvement in terms of how the films are visually shot, how they are lit. And John Wick Chapter 4 looks gorgeous. Of course, the editing is fantastic. It's incredibly slick and fluid. There's no crazy quick cutting. It kind of sticks to more of like an almost like a really old school mentality of capturing the performances, really making sure you're admiring the work that the stunt performances, the stunt performers and Keanu Reeves are putting in. Because it's truly magnificent the stuff they pull off. And the editing helps kind of emphasize that by kind of having these really drawn out takes and being able to kind of clearly and concisely show how Keanu Reeves, uh, how John Wick rather, <laughs> gets from point A to point B through all of these various enemies. I was genuinely very impressed with Bill Skarsgård in this film. I feel like he managed to create this brilliantly kind of pompous and weaselly persona to the character. Yeah, he was really terrific. Um, and of course, Donnie Yen being thrown into this. I mean, I love Donnie Yen to bits. Uh, Ip Man and Ip Man 2, those two films that were like crucial in regards to my appreciation of Chinese action films as well as also my appreciation for martial arts and so I'm always got a, I've always got a really soft spot for Donnie Yen in my heart and seeing him kick ass in this film was like a dream come true seeing him fight side by side with Keanu Reeves was incredible in this film I feel like they do a really good job at developing his character as well as also doing the great thing that these films do which is that they have a lot of inference and subtext and they do a little good job at showing you instead of just telling you you know, um, there is a lot of history behind Donnie Yen's character and a lot of history involving John Wick. And they never they never bog the audience down in all of the kind of the information as to how they know each other. What do they do to each other with, with each other? It's kind of it, that all of that sort of left to the background and left to your imagination. And you're you, you're instantly sold on them being, you know, friends from a former life or whatever. And kind of, you know, speaking of other characters that are introduced, uh, Rina Sawayama's character was really interesting. I feel like she's got a really lot, you know, a lot of really good potential going forwards if they ever decide to do more stuff with her. Um, and seeing Hiroyuki Sonata as well, I mean, it's Hiroyuki Sonata. He, he's, he's always fantastic. I really want to see more John Wick stuff set in Japan, like in terms of the universe and how kind of, you know, we've seen a lot of stuff about how the continental works in New York and in America, and we've seen bits and pieces elsewhere, of course. But Something about the, it might just be I'm a, such a sucker for kind of like Japan as a setting and the kind of the different sort of culture and aesthetics that comes from that. But certainly it was just that whole kind of Japanese continental and all the characters involved with that was really exciting, fascinating and visually kind of splendid to watch. Also really big fan of uh, Shamir Anderson. And again, it's it, there's a lot of good potential for his character too. I like the fact that you know, he's called Mr. Nobody and he's almost set up in a similar way to John Wick in the first film where there are so many ambiguities as an audience member as to what he is, what can he do, what will he do. Uh, the only difference being is that Mr. Nobody, as his name would imply, no one knows what he is. He doesn't have a legacy set behind him like John Wick did. And I felt like that was really interesting, that he was this character that kind of felt like he really kind of came in out of nowhere, started kicking ass, and everyone's like, who the hell is this guy? And I, I like the fact that he had he has a lot of ambiguity and mystery behind him. However, I wasn't really a huge fan of how his character arc was handled towards the end of the film. I felt like there was probably a tidier, more satisfying way to deal with his character. But um, you know, it's it's not the it's not the biggest offense. Each film has done a great job at kind of expanding upon the law of the world, how the Continentals work, the high table, how does John Wick fit in all of this. But I wonder whether chapter four leaves perhaps too many threads and open-ended ideas. 
I think, you know, that it's a franchise that's looking to expand. But each subsequent film before Chapter 4 felt like they all quite fluidly and neatly tied into one another. Whereas I wonder whether Chapter 4 might be branching out too much. So I felt like there were a lot of different kind of loose ends that hadn't been uh, tidied up. But there's also plenty of ideas and interesting stuff to explore off the back of Chapter 4. So it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, tricky, it's a tricky thing to kind of to juggle and to, and to handle. My biggest issue, in all honesty, it is the length. Um, <laughs> I don't have a big problem with long films. I love, I love bloody love Lord of the Rings, you know? And then those films are like 30 million years long. <laughs> have, you, have you seen Seven Samurai? That film does not stop going on. And I sat through all of Zack Snyder's Justice League, and that film is fucking... That's too long. <laughs> I understand the purpose of its length being there. Um, one reason being due to kind of specific plot stuff that happens and another reason being because it's trying to explore new ideas in a kind of a, a gratifying and an exciting way and so to do that extend the length you can explore and do more however for me i feel like the length of the film and as such the length of many of the action sequences slightly lessen the impact for me personally uh, i know for a lot of people they would super you know they absolutely love and engage with it and for the most part i did but I really did feel like in some moments that it was kind of just washing through me. Um, there's only so much of kind of a sequence of John Wick kicking ass can last for and can look as impressive as it is until you start to feel a little bit weighed down, a little bit tired. I totally understand and appreciate that's the that's the point, especially in regards to one sequence kind of towards the end. It actually is quite close to the conclusion of the film. But there is a moment which... You know, the impact, or you, as an audience member, the, the, the scene is deliberately trying to get you to go, oh, God, oh, he's, <laughs> we're still here, we're still going. And that's like, that's like the point, and the editing and the filmmaking of that scene emphasises that point. But my problem is, is that the entire sequence just before was so long and arduous that by the time we get to that point where John Wick is having to pick himself back up again, as an audience member, I just felt really kind of done out. I kind of, I struggled. I was almost more exhausted than John Wick was. And John Wick had been hit by like 14 cars and stabbed several million times beforehand. And yeah, I felt like I was more exhausted. <laughs> yeah, for every standout sequence in this film, such as the top-down shooting uh, sequence in the, in the the abandoned building, or whether it's John Wick wielding nunchucks, anything that Donnie End in this film, all of these incredible moments, um... There was just as much action sequences or in-between moments that I feel like could have been shortened, personally. I know the novelty of this film is that it's long and that there is so much action that ties into one another. But in terms of a viewing experience, I think it could have been I think it could have been tidied up. But John Wick as a whole, as, as a franchise, as a quadrilogy, as a whatever comes next, I think it's great. It's all really exciting and compelling stuff. And I feel like it does a good job at being, you know, pretty Bob Standard's action shenanigans while also still kind of employing a level of maturity and commitment and stylishness that makes it feel unique but it's a, it's a film that pushes boundaries and potential in the genre and sometimes it does feel a little bit overbearing and tiring to deal with but other times it really does propel into the stratosphere with just how incredible it is. Yeah, I would totally recommend Chapter 4. I feel like it'd be difficult to watch in and, in and by itself. Um, I think it's one that definitely requires some backstory. It's also weirdly one that almost kind of makes the third film feel a bit redundant, if I'm honest. It's a film that made me realise that number three didn't actually change all that much in regards to John Wick and his place in the world. Almost feels like you could watch the first two films and then just jump straight into chapter four, in all honesty. It's exciting, it's engaging. For the most part, I feel like the length for many people perhaps might tire them out a bit. But it's hard to deny the film and in terms of its action sequences and what it manages to achieve with its stunt work, with its choreography, with its editing. It's, it's truly remarkable stuff. Yeah, those are my thoughts on John Wick Chapter 4. Um, hopefully when I edit this down, I'm able to kind of make this as coherent as I can. If you like this video and you want more videos of me giving my first impressions or immediate impressions upon watching something in the cinema, then let me know and I'll, I'll try and make more of that. Otherwise, keep an eye out for the usual analysis videos. Um, I'm currently working one at the moment. Uh, that's something that's a little bit more in line with my Robert Eggers video I made, but perhaps a little less intense and arduous to make. Um, and I've also got a script in the work for a short film that I want to make and post on YouTube. Um, we'll see how that goes. 
and we'll, you know, hard to predict. We'll just go with the flow, see what works. Stay safe out there. Consider liking and subscribing. And uh, yeah, enjoy yourself. Yeah, much love. Uh, this entire time, I have not worn any trousers. So here's a thigh shot.